All right, you guys, welcome to the farm. We are at Finca de Vida with Brian and Jody. Just thought we'd just sit down <laughs> and spitball a little bit, see if we can't drum up a few retreaters for next year, maybe facilitators, if there's any of you guys interested in hosting your own retreat. Brian and Jody have done amazing things here over the last 15? 14 years. 14. Well, we bought the farm in 06 and we opened in 09. It's been a labor of love, that's for sure. Yeah. So let's just get into it. Yeah, so sure. I kind of just want to pick your brains and yeah. maybe you can start out just giving us a condensed version of you and Jody's stories yeah. and you know what brought you to Costa Rica. Definitely. So um, Jody and I, so I, I was a professional tennis player and Jody worked in, in the insurance sector in Atlanta and, and um, uh, I got sick uh, after I finished my career in tennis and um, it's funny how your whole, my whole life just kind of completely changed. And I went and saw a bunch of doctors and doctors could only put me on pills or do surgery. Mm -hmm. And when I realized that wasn't gonna work, I decided to kind of change my whole life and just become my own doctor. So I changed my diet. I changed my mind, which I always say is most important. I forgave an alcoholic abusive father. And, um, and I started to meditate and pray. And, um, and, this changed my whole life. It completely transformed me. And so I, you know, I became very passionate about helping others with this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where along my journey, I met my wife. Uh, make a long story short, we, <laughs> we, get, we came here for our honeymoon mm -hmm. and um, we fell in love with Costa Rica, right? And we decided, uh, you know, let's sell everything and move down here and start a healing center. And uh, it's been amazing. We bought this place. It's, you know, the remote jungle paradises of Costa Rica. Um, there was no road, no electric, no water. We had to learn a lot. We grew a lot. People told us we would never, we would never, you know, be able to grow plants here because of the erosion, this, that, and the other. And you see, you see what we did. You know, here we are 14 years in and so many people have, we've helped so many people. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. And even yeah. just how you and Jody met your story of how you met was just so cool to us that you met through raw foods and yeah exactly some of our first dates were doing wheatgrass shots you know <laughs> at, the, at the the local natural health food store and and learning all we could about health because you know Jody has arthritis and and for myself I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia chronic fatigue syndrome and um, it took us a while it took me a pretty strict uh, about year and a half two years of diet mind change and meditation and prayer work, but I was able to completely eliminate my autoimmune illness. Mm -hmm. And my wife, she was born with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, so her right knee and left ankle her, was bone on bone pretty much when she was young. So this lifestyle has helped her systemic arthritis so, so much, but still there's a little bit left because she was born with this illness. Mm -hmm. But she's so much better, it's, it's pretty amazing what this lifestyle's done for her too. So for Dusty and I, it was really about getting back to the basics, which is why our channel and our name is Eat, Move, Rest, which is what we're doing here. We're just doing the best version of those three things and really mm -hmm. getting grounded in nature. And I mean, the fruits on the farm are just dripping off of the trees. And you guys place a heavy emphasis on just yeah. foods in their natural state. And yeah. you call them living foods. Raw foods are living foods. So do you want to elaborate on that and why they're so healing? Sure. I always tell like guests and stuff like that or people, I'm like, there's three things you need to address in your lifestyle and you'll change. You change the way you eat change the way you think, and meditate and pray. You can make a little song out of that, you right. know? Yeah. Well, first one, change the way you eat. Well, what's the biggest thing that takes the most energy? Digestion, right? So yeah. if you're eating, right, like, you know, I can't even believe I used to eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? So heavy, right? Yeah. And sometimes Thanksgiving, right, you gotta sleep, you go into the what we call a food coma, right? Mm -hmm. Well, raw food, fruits and vegetables, require the least amount of energy to produce energy. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I mean by that? Digestion. That's the big word. But fruits and vegetables require the least amount of very light diet, right? The least amount of energy to produce energy. Now, if a guest comes to the farm and they're sick, they've got energy blocks. Mm -hmm. That's really all it is. You, you have a, well, you've gone to Western medicine, they examine you and they say you have cancer of a certain part of your body. Well, that mm -hmm. really is just an energy block in the body right so in order to for you to get more energy to heal that naturally that block that cancer 
you got to change the way you eat. You got to eat lighter so that you can free up more energy so that you can heal that, mm -hmm. that block. Now, disease also can't exist in two states, hyperalkalinity mm -hmm. and hyperoxygenation. What's hyperalkaline foods? Fruits and vegetables and herbs, all the herbs on the farm and mm -hmm. herb teas, right? So the more alkaline, usually disease, usually if you talk to someone's diet and they're sick, Western medicine's given them a name, you go through their diet and it's very acidic. Mm -hmm. They're eating a lot of processed foods, meats, coffee, cigarettes, alcohol, you name it, they're doing it. But you gotta move them off that. You gotta move them from the acid to the alkaline. Mm -hmm. Hyperoxygenation, hydrogen peroxide therapy, ozone therapy, the, the saunas, far infrared saunas, mm -hmm. uh, the far infrared ray is very alkalizing. Um, these are things that hyperoxygenate the body. And when cells have tons of oxygen in them, disease can't get in. Mm -hmm. Right? When cells don't or are anaerobic, they're without oxygen, well, disease can get in and start killing live, mm -hmm. healthy cells. Right? So that, that's sort of the main two reasons why you have to start eating more of a raw food diet, mm -hmm. especially in the beginning when you're sick. Right? Even, even cooked foods in the very beginning, cooked foods drain the body of a little bit of energy. Yeah. They do. Do the experiment. Everybody out there, you know, try it. Try eating all raw for four or five days and then cook a meal mm -hmm. and see how you feel afterwards. Right. Mm -hmm. The like cooked always, meal, yeah. Go I've ahead. always said, you know, like you plant a raw seed or nut and a roasted seed or nut, one is going to sprout. It's a living food. That's life force. That's energy. Mm -hmm. The other one is going to do nothing. Exactly. And that's the same thing internally. One's going to do more for you than the other one. But something that else that resonated with me that you said a couple days ago, like you're, you're talking about food requiring energy to digest. So that's stealing a little bit of your energy, even if you're eating super clean. Yep. And there are a lot of things on the farm we're doing beyond food that give you energy Great without question. stealing it. <laughs> Absolutely. And this is another thing too. If a guest comes to the farm, it is very important for me. Um, you've heard the words life force energy or prana, right? These are things... Um, these are things that require no digestion to produce energy. Practices like watching sunrises and sunsets. You get that energy, right? We know the sun, the giver of life on this planet. Um, if you have solar panels on the roof of your house, it can run all your electric. It can run your whole, all, everything, right? Uh, and it can pay your electric bills. And we're electrical beings. Exactly. <laughs> Safe sunbathing, the melanin in your skin, is kind of like the solar panels of your body and also the iridology of any of you out there know iridology of the study of iridology mm -hmm. the the points of the body end in the eyes the ears the tongue the feet and the hands and so as the sun rises when you get that light into all the iridological points of your eyes it starts to open your body up it's producing energy without taking energy like raw food even does mm -hmm. right it's the best form of diet that we have but it still takes energy via digestion Things like sun gazing, right? Watching the sun rises, getting that light into your, the iridological points of your eyes, opening your body up, opening these blocked points up, barefoot walking. Mm -hmm. Mother Earth pulses at 9.6 hertz. They've done many, many studies on 9.6 hertz. It's four times cellular regeneration. It will regenerate your body so fast, right? Mm -hmm. It's like eating meals and meals and meals of, of antioxidants, just walking barefoot on Mother Earth. That's awesome. Hmm. Right? And all these things are free. Yes. I mean, if you're growing your own food, you pick them off the trees. You take your shoes off and you walk in the grass and you, like you said, watch the sunrise. And also the sun, like sun gazing is going to help your hormones and you're regulating your sleep cycle. Everything, circadian then rhythm, you're sleep. you're sleeping better, which all again, more energy. <laughs> all of it. And you know, God is love, right? It's in the Bible. God is love. Well, I tell you what, green, right? The chakras, the biggest color. I always tell people... What's the most predominant color that you actually, that any human being looks at when, they're, when their eyes are open? It's green. It's the color green. Mm -hmm. Well, in our chakra system, that's chakra four, the heart, love. You came in at love, you're going to go, when you leave, you're going to go back to love, right? When you leave this experience, right? And so, and, and what I find interesting is in the Bible, it says God, the most important phrase, God is love, right? Mm -hmm. And so eat those greens. It's just, I find that kind of interesting. So if you guys are unfamiliar with the chakra system, like I still can't remember all of them off the top of my head, but I find it really fascinating. And I don't think that you can really pull apart, you know, uh, chakras from Christianity or this or that. 
Um, I think everything really works together beautifully. If you could explain it for our audience, for anyone else who isn't fully sure. familiar. And I try to do it in an easy way. There's all these big, massive books that get really complicated into it. But I call the first three chakras the three desires and the upper four chakras the four understandings. And they're really just energy wheels of the body. So about, about a foot, foot and a half away from the actual physical human body is an energy body, right? And, and it expands and it contracts. Um, um, and, when, and when it expands and it's open, you're vibrant and healthy. When it's contracted and, and locked down, then that's when disease can come in, right? Um, and so um, the system is, starts with the root chakra, right? The color is red, and it's below the reproductive organs of a man or a woman. And I say, I desire to survive, right? Eating, drinking, innate needs that we all have to have. I desire to survive, mm -hmm. right? And then as we go up, color orange, second chakra, navel chakra, right here by the belly button. I desire emotions and feelings outside myself. Notice, these desires, the word desire, you're looking for them. You know, you need food first for the first one, right? You need to drink, eat, right? The second one, you're looking for love, right? You know, everything's uh, completing you at this point, you know? Mm -hmm. I need you to complete me, right? Uh, digestions is in, in this chakra, right? Intimacy is in this chakra. And then as we go up the third chakra, I desire identity, the diaphragm, right here. Color yellow, right? Right here. I desire identity of... Um, Self-esteem is here. This is a big one amongst men or women, self-esteem problems. When we look in the mirror, what, what do we think of ourselves, mm -hmm. right? Um, and sometimes that's not so good. So sometimes there's respiration problems, right? Um, all kinds of different issues. <laughs> yes, right? I mean, there's, there can be all kinds of issues when this particular chakra closes down energetically. Then maybe uh, these first three chakras, um, if you're living in these first three chakras predominantly, eventually it's going to bring you to a lot of suffering and pain when you desire, when you're looking for everything, when everything's mm -hmm. completing you, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of suffering and pain when you're looking for everything. And so generally in your life, maybe an event might happen. Western medicine gives you a name like cancer or something like that, you know? Um, mm -hmm. uh, or you just have a lot of sadness and desperation in your life. Maybe you have alcoholism or a drug addiction, you know? Mm -hmm. And it brings you to a place like this. You're like, I've had enough suffering. Mm -hmm. I want to understand, right? And so maybe you start meditating, you start changing your diet. Then all of a sudden I say that you have, you have an aha moment. Mm -hmm. Could be meditating, could be in prayer, could be at the church, could be anywhere. And all of a sudden you're like, ah, oh, I understand chakra four, color green, heart chakra. I now understand that I am love. I came in as it, I'm going to leave as it. It's my choice to go lower. It's, you know, or I can stay here. I can understand that I'm love. Then all of a sudden, suffering starts to leave. And then everything in your life is complementary. The word changes now. Understanding to des from desire, complete to complement. So when you now have a life of understanding, now everything complements you. So if your husband or your house or your stuff, if it were to be, if everything was stripped from you, who would you be? Mm -hmm. Now you would be this amazing child of God, mm -hmm. right? You wouldn't be so down now and suffering right? You would understand that you're love. Mm -hmm. So now the word shifts to understanding. Throat chakra. I understand that I am truth. You know, what you think, does it, do you speak that always? Most people do not, mm -hmm. right? So speak your truth. If you're thinking it, you've got to speak it. You've got to get it out, get it off, out of your chest, right? This is color blue. Mm -hmm. The third eye, notice we're getting higher and higher and higher. Now we're into the third eye, the pineal gland, color indigo. I understand that I'm not what I think I am, or I understand that I am intuition, right? So now we're leaving the five senses, we're leaving the physical domain, and we're entering the dream world. So lucid dreaming, you know, is, is, is located in, in, in here. Um, sixth sense, intuition. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, I just think I need to turn left. And we're like, why do you know? I don't know, I just know this. We all have this, right? Yeah. We all have a sixth sense. Some people, it's sharper than others. With meditation and prayer work and practice and stillness, you get a very sharp sixth sense. Mm -hmm. Some people, if they're living in the denser chakras, it's much more difficult. But as you develop this, sun gazing is one way of developing it. As you develop this, then the distinct voice of God is incredibly different than the distinct voice of your ego. Mm. Right? Yeah. When you're living in these understandings, the voice of God predominates. 
When you're living in the three desires, the voice of your ego predominates and then more suffering and pain comes in, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And then the last one, the physical body leaves, kind of like Jesus' resurrection, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you become the I am. You're no longer a physical body. You go into heavens. Mm -hmm. You go into the ethers. Your soul predominates then, right? Mm -hmm. Which lasts forever. That's the seven that chakras. Beautiful. That's really cool. One of the days we usually have a chakra salad where it's like all the colors of all the different fruits and veggies and we're supposed to kind of eat intuitively and select like, am I feeling drawn to orange or green or which yes. is it? And I think that you can tie that back to the chakras and maybe, totally. you know, do some inside work and figure out what might be going on. Totally. Let's say you were sick and I was uh, consulting you. You came here, um, you know, and you were working with me. Mm -hmm. I, based on my own intuitive read of you and also you talking to me i would read what chakras are blocked and i would have you eat those colors to open them we could uh, talk for hours and hours there are so many different topics just like this that i have been completely like mind blown by that i never even knew existed but it just makes me feel like more of a whole person you know after coming to farm of life every single year we learn so much more we have such a blast with you guys yeah we make it you guys fun, have really become good friends so we're planning for another awesome retreat group next year so if you guys yes. are interested definitely be sure to click the link below and get in before it's too late these spots always fill up ridiculously fast that's right they do and if you're interested in maybe being a facilitator and hosting a retreat here with brian and jody you can also message us with the link below anything else yeah, definitely. Uh, info at thinkadavita.com. If you guys, yeah, you know, either want to come visit us during the rainy season and come for a month, two months, and go deep, deep, deep into into your own healing, um, on top of going to a Dusty and Aaron's retreat, or yeah, you're a facilitator and you want to do a week long retreat during our dry season, December to April. Please contact us at info at thinkadavita.com, and we would we would love to talk to you about that. If you guys are digging on this Costa Rica content, stay tuned for next week. We will be back with a full <laughs> retreat recap. And if you guys are digging on maybe coming here next year or coming in the off season, check out the links below. Until next time, eat, move, rest your best. We'll see Love you, guys you guys soon. <laughs> Peace. Peace. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within. 